Well, let's see. Hello, everybody out there. Now I'm live. I'm several minutes late somehow or other. And uh, and and I don't even know how um, people have been able to make comments um, before I went live. I don't even know how that works, but that's wonderful. Let's see. Let's see how that'll sound. Maybe a little less of that. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Where where, where shall we start? We'll start with... Um, We'll start with current events, how about um, uh, some of which are, are even not depressing, or at least have a silver lining, it's sort of depressing, but, but um, with, with, uh, with uh, sort of optimistic possibilities uh, in there. And I'm thinking particularly of um, developments in uh, Great Britain uh, lately, um, in terms of uh, people going around with sledgehammers and smashing uh, arms um, uh, manufacturers' factories um, until they shut down in some cases, like in a town of Oldham outside of Manchester. Protests were going on, they were going on for years. And then Palestine action started smashing up the gears. And that's when the people got up off of their seats, took their families into town and blockaded the streets. For three days and nights, you could hear the banner hammers swing, though no one knew for sure what the future might bring. They knew one thing for certain, these weapons of war must not be sent to the ports they're heading for. So this is a note to Elbit Systems. You will be shut down when the sledgehammers of justice come to town. After smashing up equipment and smashing a whole bunch, a lot of folks began developing a hunch. The cops took three full days to send anyone inside. And after 15 hours, they let the charges slide. It seems the prosecutors understood the climb. British companies aiding and abetting war crimes. The factory in Oldham had to close its gate. And the muralists in Palestine said that's smashing great. So this is a note to Elbit Systems. You will be shut down. When the sledgehammers of justice come to town All around the country, hammers being swung Showing civil disobedience is stronger than the tongue Taking action here so the weapons go nowhere So they don't get set to the... They don't get set to the alley IOF cause we know what they'll do there And so does the Prime Minister And the men who he supports Selling weapons to war criminals Who don't want to go to court Who don't want to face the facts What they've done Where the bullets go When they fired from the guns This is a note to Elbit Systems You will be shut down When the sledgehammers of justice come to town is a note to Elbit Systems, you will be shut down when the sledgehammers of justice come to town. Uh, I have contacts in and they don't work very well. But they have advantages. So, uh, what else was I? I was gonna some commentaries on um, the current moment before we get into. I thought I'd, I thought I'd start with the uh, with these uh, 
this series of uh, last Saturday um, concerts uh, on the internet from my living room, I thought I would um, have the theme of uh, songs about history from now, like, um, you know, from uh, this month, more or less, like, in this case, late August to late September, thereabouts, you know. And, um, yeah, so I think that'll be out, my theme will be, um, you know, history. Um, and um, starting with a few songs related to the current moment. So, and that's very related to the current moment. El, uh, the Palestine Action, palestineaction.org. Check it out. Uh, they just recently smashed up another factory just a few days ago. They are very actively smashing factories all over England and Scotland. And uh, it's very heartwarming. Um, and, um, yeah, for other current um, commentary on what's happening in the world. Here's another one. And I guess everything sounds like it's all coming through okay. Tell me if I can turn anything down or up or... Um, the lightning and thunder those left alive as long as they live will wonder was there something that could have been done before nuclear winter blocked out the sun after the earth that we once knew was blown asunder at the end of world war three any pundits who may still be found will have heated debates about how the end came round. Was it the Black Sea blockade when the rush for the end times was made? Or the breaking of promises promised when the wall came down? At the end of World War Three. As people look for clean water to drink As they're dreaming of the days when they had a kitchen sink Wishing they could try again To talk to belligerent men Back when we were hanging on brink At the end of World War Three. When everyone has the same thought Is this what imperial intransigence wrought? Life under occupation Or the end of creation Decisions that decades of lost opportunities brought At the end of World War III Billions dead or dying It won't matter who was right And who was lying When civilization has ended Once the last war has descended Only then will there be no left denying At the end 
out of World War III As the few left alive Survey the rubble remaining Wondering how long they'll survive Too late to question the story Of expansion or conquest or glory No time to rewind from the date Armageddon arrived At the end of World War III And um, other current current events. Um, let's just uh, mention um, for one thing. Uh, in well, many different current events. I guess. Um, well, one thing that's going on is people are planning for um, October eighth in uh, London. England, um, there will be uh, thousands of folks, I believe, um, converging on the Houses of Parliament to uh, surround um, them in solidarity with the imprisoned journalist and editor and founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. And, um, and on October 15th, there will be a Online, uh, 24 hour online uh, Assangeathon. I just invented that, Assangeathon. It's a marathon in solidarity with Julian Assange, but Assangeathon has a nice ring to it, or maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, and, um, and I will be touring in Scandinavia uh, throughout. Uh, October. So if there's any Scandinavians watching, please feel free to get in touch. And there will apparently be an event in Stockholm uh, around uh, related to Julian Assange on October 9th, but this is in the planning phases, stages, as is, as is the entire tour, in fact. Although some of the dates are confirmed and the plane tickets are bought and I will be there for sure, but, um, and I will definitely be in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, but how many gigs I'll be doing in any of those places and uh, whether I'll return home uh, broke or not it is very much up in the air at the moment and um, yeah so but I'll be there and um, and here's a song I'll be doing along with many others true story when Julie met Stella in the embassy in the only room for seven years that he would ever see guarded by police cops on every street an unusual situation for the first time you should meet when Julian met Stella the time they spent was increasingly within the walls of a little tent they could have some privacy from the ever-present gaze Under which he was spending all his nights and days When Julian met Stella, there was the chance of grace Perhaps the president would decide to drop the case They had two children Beneath the watchful eyes of the Americans and British And all kinds of other spies When Julian met Stella on Embassy Row it was before he was abducted and forced to go to Belmarsh Prison. Without a chance to speak, awaiting the extradition that the USA seeks. When Julian met Stella, the folks at the UN and people all around the world spoke out then. This journalist belongs among the free, not in prison for exposing crimes against humanity. When Julian met Stella. And, um, sticking with, uh, songs about, uh, what's been happening over the past, um, few 
weeks or, you know, just nowadays, um, this summer, before we move on to songs about this moment in history, here's um, a song that is, I think, increasingly familiar to people in so much of the world. Wake up another morning, see my baby's cheeks, glad to be around, to have another week, to watch the magic happen, find all there is to learn, as the planet floods and burns. Wake up another morning, grind some coffee beans, turn on Al Jazeera, Marvel at the scenes Towns reduced to ashes While the twisters turn As the planet floods and burns Wake up another morning Picking on those strings One more day to be here Find out what life brings the horizon's red and easy, that much I can discern As the planet floods and burns Wake up another morning, watch the neighbors drive away Heading to a warehouse to work another day Leaving me to wonder just how much the wind can churn as the Floods and burns Wake up another morning See the Twitter trolls Complain about the fascists Who are living on the dole Demanding safe space in the boxcar Other such concerns As the planet floods and burns Wake up another morning, see the orange hue Know what needs to happen, don't know what to do Show me to the ark, where's the bow and stern As the planet floods and burns Wake up another morning, in the now again If I want to see the future I can count to ten History, you'll find it in the tombstones and the urns As the planet floods and burns As the planet floods and burns The news stories um, are uh, really uh, often kind of sadly entertaining in the way that they are so often not um, reporting all the flooding and burning as if they are global events that are happening all over the northern and southern hemispheres, you know, basically at the same time. Um, you know, that it's how often the news re reports are still e local or regional in nature. And they talk about, well, we've been having a drought on the western, co you know, western U.S. for a long time. Like, like, hopefully they, these people have, are actually aware that this is not a local phenomenon necessarily. But um, a very gl global one. So um, I was, uh, let's see, I was thinking, moving the... Uh, on to a few songs related to history, which I've been updating lately. Let's see, here we go. 
Yeah, so um, here's a, uh, on the 29th of August in 1786, there was um, folks in uh, Western Massachusetts had a meeting. was raised in Massachusetts on the farm where I was born from the time I was a young lad to the fields I was sworn before high corn could go to market it was stolen from the mill sent to mother England from here in the Berkshire Hills So when I heard There'd be a rising I put on A uniform Slept barefoot In the mud Beneath The thunderstorms In war There is no glory Just friends And comrades Kill shattered lives and broken homes here in the Berkshire Hills. Then began the nightmare all over once again. The revolutions, debtors' prisons filled with good upstanding men said to hell with King John Adams of this farce we had our fill and we set our sights on liberty here in the Berkshire Hills their courts they couldn't function their judges on the run each new day we had our farms was a victory we we'd won for years we ruled our land stood our ground until we made our last stand by great barrington here in the berkshire hills Daniel Shays, and I'm speaking to you now. If I fought a revolution, maybe you can tell me how. I was born a poor man, and I'm a poor man still. Bury me beneath the hemlock here in the Berkshire Hills. For three years, they controlled Western Massachusetts. The rebellion led directly to the Bill of Rights being passed. And um, moving on to another anniversary, 2019. Is that right? I guess so. It was August 30th, 2019.
that um, in a very troubled town, Colorado, where many people have been killed, what happened? I just I thought I thought I lost this screen, but it was not this not this one. It was a different one. That's good. Anyway, okay, yeah. August thirtieth, twenty nineteen. His family moved from Denver to Aurora. Mama thought they'd be safer out there Away from all the hubbub of the city Closer to the mountains and fresh air Some kids are into fancy cars and football Getting lots of tattoos on their shins But Elijah played the violin Some kids are into hamburgers and hot dogs Other kids just do things their own way Elijah was a vegetarian And on his lunch breaks he'd go and play Music for the animals at the shelter the Staff welcomed their comrade with a grin Elijah played the violin a young man, Elijah moved in with his cousin. He became a massage therapist. He had a kind and open hand, while others only knew the fist, such as the men in blue who were called out one night to assault their unknown kin. Elijah played the violin. They slammed him into the wall. They threw him to the ground. Although he made no effort to fight back. They choked him till he vomited. Then they did it more. No body cams recorded the attack. Elijah said he couldn't breathe. He was begging for his life. So they shot him full of ketamine. Elijah played the violin. He went into cardiac arrest soon after he was dead. He had not committed one offense. Aside from being black in these disunited states and trying to exist in the present tense. Nothing happened to the cops. They were just following procedures, killing people for the color of their skin. Elijah played the violin. Elijah played the violin. Elijah played the violin. And then, moving on to other events. So, um, I'm just going to go for an hour here, so we're not going to get to everything, but um, let's see. Uh, what was that song called? I was, oh, here it is. In... Uh, September third on September third, nineteen thirty nine, a uh, boat called the Winnipeg arrived in uh, Valparaiso in Chile with twenty two hundred refugees on it, all from Spain. <laughs> The 
ship just barely got out of France in time to avoid all the refugees being taken by the Nazis. Across the ocean wide, where many ships had been, where many long remember those passengers within, all of those whose families, that's the wrong key. Across the ocean wide, where many ships had been, where many long remember those passengers within, all of those whose families were buried or in jail in the killing fields of Spain, when the Winnipeg set sail. Across the ocean wide, across the ocean open seas, a world, a world better than the camps, the French authorities threw the people in. They lived to tell the tale, they'd be the lucky few when the Winnipeg set sail. Across the ocean wide, the ship was met at bay by the throngs of people who just had to come that day in 1939 to cheer and cry and say all hail solidarity when the Winnipeg set sail. Across the ocean wide was where they had to flee the thousands upon thousands of Spanish refugees from the lands of Europe where humanity had failed to the shores of Valparaiso when the Winnipeg set sail. Across the ocean wide was where they would remain as dictatorship would rule for half a century in Spain. Torpedoed in 42, now it lies upon the shale. One voyage will outlive her when the Winnipeg sets sail. Something like that. There's some kind of cool little uh, riff in between that I was practicing yesterday and now have entirely forgotten. But uh, that's how it is with live streaming. Um, especially if you don't practice enough. Let's see. September 3rd, 1939. That's when the ship arrived in Chile. September 3rd. 1991 mm. Mm -hmm. in Hamlet, North Carolina. Sometimes I walk the aisles of the grocery store. I think about a day some 20 years before Where this chicken came from south of the Mason Dixon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go Sometimes I walk the aisles of the grocery store I think about a day some 20 years before where this chicken came from south of the Mason-Dixon line the Imperial Foods factory in Hamlet, Caroline the third day of September 19, 1991 where for so many good people was the day the race was run sometimes I walk the aisle I can hear the screams of those blasted by hot oil when old hoes ruptured at the seams of those blasted by hot oil when the fireball arose while more oil fueled the fire being blasted from the hose more oil fueled the fire 
The room filled up with smoke when those who weren't already dead then began to choke. Sometimes I walk the aisles and I think about the padlocks on the fire doors barred and blocked. The owner didn't want his workers stealing chickens out the back. It's a right to work state. They complain, they get the sack. So Tyson saved some money and workers lost their lives. Once the fire was put out, the number dead was 25. Sometimes I walk the aisles, somehow feel ashamed. 11 years of operation, inspectors never came. Inspectors never came, never came to look to see if they did anything according to the book. Sometimes I walk the aisles and I wonder to myself how many people died to put these nuggets on the shelf. Sometimes I walk the aisles. Oh, Santiago. There's a good idea. And very related to history as well um, because, of course, it was on uh, September 11th, 1973 that um, the Chilean government was uh, overthrown by a CIA-backed coup led by a general who, along with so much of his uh, military, was trained in the United States, specifically at the School of the Americas in Georgia. And um, and uh, as anybody who is old enough uh, remembers, and anybody who's studied recent history will know the uh, coup in Chile became as much of an iconic event as the election of the socialist leader of Chile that was overthrown, his election, Allende's election, three years earlier. Both extremely significant events in uh, the history of my lifetime. And um, folks older than me, who were adults when that happened, uh, were working at a factory in Scotland. And um, a few months after the coup, when they watched the presidential palace of, in Santiago being bombed by planes that they had manufactured, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Jet fighters bombed the palace. We all watched it on TV. The 11th of September, 1973. All across the world, people cried in vain as we heard stories of the students being tortured and slain. Stories of the workers, shop stewards, and the rest being slaughtered at the new dictator's behest. Labor groups condemned it, said we were on the workers' side, including all the engineers of East Kilbride. People organized a boycott of General Pinochet, who had overthrown Allende with a hawker hunter jet. Then a few months later, March of 74, Bob Fulton came to work at the Rolls-Royce factory floor. He looked at the orders that had come in that day and found crates with jet engines from Chile. Jet engines from the Air Force across the ocean wide sent to be repaired in East Kilbride. Didn't take a minute for Fulton and his mates to come to the decision. They would not touch these crates. Soon 4,000 Rolls-Royce workers voted they agreed to stand with the Chileans in their hour of need. 
management decried them. The Tories screamed and cussed. But the Hawker Hunter engines were left to sit and rust. Nowhere else on earth were workers qualified to repair the engine sitting there in East Kilbride. It's often hard to know if you've changed anything a whit. But decades later, a Chilean general would admit. For a time in Santiago, there were no fighters in the sky because the whole Chilean Air Force had not one jet that could fly. They may not have changed the world, this group of union engineers. But these crates of metal sat corroding for four years. So here's to British labor, how for four years it tried to do what could be done from East Kilbride. Jet fighters bombed the palace. We all watched it on TV. The 11th of September, 1973. Let's see here. Um... Yeah, and if we kind of stick around the um, south of the U.S. border for some other relevant September-related stories, the biggest mass execution in the history of the United States that I'm aware of, um, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest. I, I mean, uh, I I know that it's a terrible thing to say when you're uh, for for people who are into history to ever talk about the biggest, you know, because um, uh, but uh, I think the biggest mass hanging in the history of the United States. Not the biggest in the history of the area. Uh, you know, I mean, that pre, pre-U.S., pre there was uh, bigger uh, mass hangings. I believe there was, the biggest that I've ever heard of was, I believe there were 120 pirates hanged in Boston once in one day. But um, that was uh, in the early 1700s, I believe. But uh, in uh, 18, let's see, what was it? In 1850? No, 1847 was when um, 50 men were hanged. Uh, some were pardoned, others escaped. It happened between September 10th and September 13th, 1847, the hangings comrades who had been captured were forced to participate in setting up the gallows. My name is John Riley. I'll have your ear only a while. I left my dear home in Ireland. It was death, starvation, or exile. When I got to America, it was my duty to go. Enter the army and slog across Texas to join in the war against Mexico. And it was there in the pueblos and hillsides I saw the mistake I had made. Part of a conquering army with the morals of a bayonet blade. So in the midst of these poor dying Catholics, screaming children, the burning stench of it all, Myself and two hundred Irishmen decided to rise to the call. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. Marched neath the green flag of St. Patrick, emblazoned with Erin Bra. Bright with the harp and the shamrock, 
and Libertad Padre Republica. Just 50 years after Wolf Tone, 5,000 miles away, the Yanks called us a legion of strangers, and they can talk as they may, but from Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. major battles. Churubusco was the last. Overwhelmed by the cannons from Boston, we fell after each mortar blast. Most of us died on that hillside in the service of the Mexican state. So far from our occupied homeland, we were heroes and victims of fate. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied, so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied, so we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. I, um, yeah, I mean, Paul is mentioning the historian thing, and I mean, I've seen it written that, um, actually on a number of occasions, that the biggest mass hanging in U.S. history was, um, after the revolt of the Mendota Indians in, uh, Minnesota in the, uh, in the 1860s when 38 Mendota Indians were hanged, and, um, which is a, I don't, I don't mean to upstage anything, anybody, but I'm pretty sure that the biggest, the, the, the mass, that may have been the biggest in a single day. I, I don't know, because the, the hangings of the San Patricios were dragged out over the course of, I believe, four days. So maybe that, that's probably, that it would make very good sense if that is the origin of that little historical um, anomaly or whatever. Um, yeah, that, that, uh, I'll go with that theory until somebody else comes up with a different one that makes more sense. Um, well, let's see. Sticking with uh, September history. There's too many. Too much. Too much. I got a history section on my website if anybody wants to see more history from, from any of these months. But... Um, well, let's see. There's some nice things that happen in September. I mean, you know, nice things as a result of bad things, kind of as these things often go when it comes to social movements, you know? Um, Where they buy the politicians. 
is the power has its seat. Because 99% of us are suffering at the mercy of the madmen on the street. Because all of us are victims of class warfare being waged on us by the 1%. Because these greedy banksters rob the country, leaving us without the means to pay the rent. Because both my parents lost their savings. I have never opened an account As the interest on my credit card just doubled Now I can't pay the minimum amount Cause these budget cuts are just immoral Our schools is overcrowded as they are Cause there are no buses where I live But I can't afford to drive a car So we're gonna stay right here. We're gonna stay right here Cause it has been demonstrated amply that the winners are the ones who stick around Cause this world should belong to everyone Not just the banksters who would smash it to the ground Cause we've noticed voting doesn't change things when the politicians are mostly millionaires Cause we're learning how to stand up like Tunisians Like they did in Tahrir Square and we're gonna stay right here We're gonna stay right here Cause corporations are not people and we can't just let them choose Cause if we leave our fate to them All of us are surely lose Cause the climate clock is ticking And we can't just leave our world behind Cause corporate rule isn't working And it's time for humans' hearts and minds We're gonna stay right here. 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 That, of course is a song I wrote after uh, attending uh, one of uh, many um, occupations at uh, Wall Street um, around, you know, or, you know, the, equi the local equivalent of Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street all over the country that was happening all over the world. Uh, September was... Uh, Quite a yeah, the debt collective. The of course the economy crashed in September, uh, in the it, the crash of two thousand eight, and all the banks crashed, started crashing in September, and then of course Occupy Wall Street happened several years later, or you know, in September, which was not accidental, and um, and then it also it was. Uh, I guess was it, let's see. I guess it was not not yeah, not at all accidental that the banking sector in Iceland also began to collapse um, in September two thousand eight. So my last September song will be for you in this little broadcast will be about Iceland um, and. Uh, and the collapse of the banks in Iceland there. And, um, and yes, if you um, want to hear more songs about history, then um, I got it pretty much organized and updated more or less at davidrovics.com slash history. And uh, as far as the, my contributions to this little genre or whatever it is, been lovely seeing y'all here um 
If that's Tarek from Vets for Peace, I know somebody is trying to get in touch with you. Um, <laughs> tell me if that's you. And whoever else has been watching, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Great to see you out there. Um, anybody's in October in Scandinavia, please let me know if you want to organize a gig. I'd love to see you in October. If you're in the UK, I'll be there in June. And if you got an extra whole lot of money, I want to get a van, a free Julian Assange van to take all over the country with me. I'm going to write something up on the website about that. Oh, it's a different Tarek. Okay, sorry. Oh, and speaking of Vets for Peace, I'll be singing at their convention this evening online. How could I forget that? Come on. Um, yeah, so veteransforpeace.org, I believe, there's, is their website. If anybody wants to participate in the conference, it's happening right now. And the concert this evening will be free on their YouTube and Facebook pages. Iceland is an island with half a million or so Vikings. Mostly known for volcanoes, hot springs, and fishing. Known for its welfare state, for being good and socialistic. Certainly not known for being corrupt or nepotistic. But in the USA and Europe, when they were deregulating banks, Iceland's politicians took bribes and joined their ranks. Soon you had a situation one would think just couldn't be. A bank whose debt was worth ten times the country's GDP. When Wall Street imploded, sure enough it spread. Banks all over the world were floating in the red. All over the world. Governments made the plan to cut spending and raise taxes on the working woman and working man. The banks were bailed out while the people had to pay. But in Iceland, people thought there must be a better way. And the earth stood still a moment. Fear was struck in every top. When Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Folks were in the streets in Reykjavik and just couldn't be ignored. They said this is a debt we Icelanders can't afford. Let's guarantee deposits of all our people, yes indeed. But as for all the speculators motivated by their greed to make really dumb investments to them, Iceland said good luck. Sorry for your losses, but we don't really give a fuck. The 1% all trembled when they took away the trough. When Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Gordon Brown called them terrorists, said we cannot let this stand. Who do these peacenik blondes think they are in Iceland? They threatened isolation and economy in flames. But the Icelanders said, sorry, but the banks can settle their own claims, though that might be harder for them now that they're under house arrest. Or else they fled the country as they were most unwelcome guests. And now Reykjavik's recovery just makes the fat cats cough. Since Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. If you haven't heard of this example, Perhaps there's a reason why the owners of the world don't want this kind of shit to fly. They say we all must pay up in this shakedown by the mob if we can't afford to pay the rent because we don't have a job. They say it's not their problem if we're forever shackled by their debt. We must save the 1% from the fate they should have met. But there is an alternative, though it makes the fat cat scoff. Since Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Since Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. I hope you've enjoyed the hour, everybody out there from wherever you are. And keep in touch. Keep on keeping on. See you online. And if you're in Scandinavia, UK, or the Pacific Northwest, hopefully I'll see you in the real world. And who knows where else I'll manage to get to. Thank you very much. And um, drop by if you're in the neighborhood, wherever you are. And bring an instrument or not. Either way. 
Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.